is it in theaters? It's in the occasional. It was in the occasional theater. <laughs> well, there you go. We were, you know, it 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 was just like blossoming on the on the uh, on the the film festival circuit as the pandemic hit, and uh, we had schedules, we had everything going. We were actually in uh, San Jose, right, Ron? Yeah. With that down down San Jose area at the Cinequest Film Festival. Sure. And the only good thing about what happened is it <laughs> stopped all the other screenings. So by the time our movie hit and we brought all of our friends, we got the audience award. <laughs> Yay! Well, that's, that's, that's big news. That's great news. Um, <laughs> And the film, you know, you you both of you are theater actors. I mean, you come from the stage, and I appreciate that. There is something certainly Shakespearean uh, about disrupted. Uh, you know, where you have its revenge. It's it encompasses a lot of the human emotion, uh, but it's done in a very interesting and dramatic way. Where you have two, you have an adversary, a protagonist, and an antagonist. That you know cat and mouse type thing. So I'm going to start with Jeffrey. Was there an audition process for this? How did you get involved with Disrupted? Um, interesting that you would ask me about the audition process, because I think I was the only one who auditioned. I was the only one who the, they couldn't find a Herald. Really? So they were looking, looking, um, and but everybody else is just <laughs> hey Marilla. <laughs> to adjust some lighting. <laughs> Almost everybody else in in oh, fact everybody sorry. else in the movie is is either uh, uh, somebody who has worked with Andre before or or friend or acquaintance or or you know, realtor. So. <laughs> It sounds like an Ed Wood movie. So the, I saw the I saw the breakdown for this character and thought that'd be fun. I uh, you know I I I sort of not sort of I started in the industry as the good guy and it was always the either the reverend or the the the, the just the nice person or the person who was sure. um, had bad things happen to them. So it was really interesting to be able to inflict instead of receive. And I thought that would be a lot of fun to do. So I did, I auditioned for it and, um, and they, they bought it. And Ron, how did you get into the, the film? I've, I've known Andre uh, for, oh uh, boy, almost 10 years, I think. And um, I met him on the set of someone else's movie hmm. that Andre was uh, DPing on. And then he called me for a web series he wrote called Red Sleep. And after we worked on that, um, he said, he said, I'm working on my first feature. I want to send it to you. And the original was almost just two guys, three guys, you know, out, out in the woods and a whole thing. And he had written it for me to do. And then the maturation of the of everything it did it, it was about three and a half years and I think uh, actually Jeffrey came in about one and three quarters in and we had been filming things and and interestingly enough on the auditioning once Money Guys came in into this project that was when they said hey you know. I think the role of Pete may be like, uh, I don't know, Brian Cranston. <laughs> and Andre's, Andre is like, well, don't, don't think he'll do this for free. But I don't know. So I actually had to audition uh, a few times on film and we had already filmed a bunch of stuff. Hmm. But Andre, I, I grew a beard. We did one with a beard, one without a beard. And uh, in the end, uh, Andre talked them into uh, using a little no name from Northern California. There you go. Had you guys known each other or been aware of each other prior to the film? No. 
Je Jeffrey and I met in, in Tahoe um, during those uh, last scenes, and and it was a heck of a. I mean, we were filming from the afternoon all the way into six o'clock in the morning, and it was just you go, you go, you go, you go, and all the people were there. And but um, Jeffrey and Marie and I stayed in the same kind of. Uh, we had a townhouse that they had uh, let us use graciously, which was really nice. It was cold and uh, snow, a little bit of snow back then, but not much, but it was cold. Um, but Jeffrey, as soon as I met Jeffrey, I was like, this guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he's well, just and vice he's versa, a real pro. <laughs> 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 yeah. And it's just, uh, you know, really, he came in. Andre could tell you uh, when that I mean they, what we see. Sixty-five guys, I think, for Harold. Wow. And in the end, Andre actually sent me three of the auditions, and it's, and I just saw Jeffrey, and I said, "Well, I mean, what are you waiting for?" It's he I owe this to you, Ron. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Jeffrey, as as audiences more and more are, are are going to see disrupted, what do you think they're going to be pulling from the film, the story itself? You know, um, it it's incredibly relevant uh, as far as just the 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 world and what's happening today with people being just pushed out of of housing, people being pushed out of of, of life by just you know financial one-upmanship, however you want to say it, uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's very topical. Um, it's so weird just for me to watch movies now and, and not see masks and, and see people touch each other. Yeah. And to see, you know, and all that sort of thing. So I, I'm glad that it is still relevant uh, as far as like the technology goes, we have phones. We have a, the only weird thing about the script for me also is that we talk about Priuses and Leafs and, and, and you know, and Teslas and stuff. But, you know, um, it, it, it's still staying relevant. And it, uh, it look, I, I'm in real estate where we're, we're doing the same thing in Los Angeles that is, that is happening, uh, that happened in San Francisco. It's just people being pushed out because uh, it's the, the unaffordability. Um, um, yeah. I, I, Ron, what about you? How, what do you feel audiences are going to be taking away when they watch Disrupted? Yeah. I, I, I just, uh, I, I think f from what I understand from, say my family as audience members when they came and they didn't know anything. And they just, what I love about this movie and Andre's writing is the, the three stories that end up coming together in the way that they come together. And in the beginning, you think you're lost, but he continually keeps pulling you in on that ride. Hmm. And Really, what I hope they take away from this movie, uh, it, it, nothing moral, but uh, what I hope they take away is keep an eye on Andre Welsh. This kid's going to be making some major movies someday. And, uh, and I think this is a testament. This is his first feature film. And I think this is a, a testament to how he can work and you got to understand this guy's walking around with a camera and a microphone and he's, you know, doing all this. He's doing it all himself. And uh, in the end, hire a few, uh, you know, hire an editor, get some music in there. But he's a guy to keep your eye on for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, Spielberg started the same way and, and, and so did a lot of other people. They did it all and then, you know, are still kind of. I guess that's what keeps them on the top of the of the heap is the fact that they can do everything and they understand how films are put together. They're not just looking at it from one perspective. Um, is uh, I'll ask uh, I'll ask Jeffrey is is he a, an actor's director? He is in that he yeah he he knows he knows what an actor's going through. Um, 
but the great thing about uh, about Andre and it is that he just keeps the camera rolling, and we just talk about it, and we we just we just keep going. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just I, I have to think uh, as someone who, who who then would have to sit back and look at all this footage. My God, how, what are you going to pick? Because you got <laughs> you got a lot of stuff. But uh, he he just does not want to be in the position where he's like, God, I wish I would have gotten that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you the last word, Ron. I mean, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Andre's work and and does he allow a lot of going off page? I mean, was there a lot of uh, ad lib? Uh, there <laughs> is during there is during where he where when Jeffrey said just keep it rolling. But he'll actually talk to you about it. But I have to say his writing is there. Yeah. So you don't need much uh, as far as improvising a scene. But when we need it and he wants more, again, he does. He just keeps that camera on. And and his uh, it, it's just it's going to say on his tombstone, let's do it one more time. Yeah. What a what a lovely sentiment that is. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you both for your time this morning and and I do appreciate Disrupted. It's a great film. I mean, I I watched it and I was I was pulled in uh especially by the idea of these three stories and you kind of go what the hell's happening and then it all it all kind of gels together. It's it is very well written and this guy's got a lot of talent and I hope I see more of him soon. Well, we, we appreciate you having us, and and uh, I, we firmly believe that this this film just uh, needs an audience, it needs eyeballs, and uh, I, I haven't had anybody come up to me and say they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do our best to make sure people know about it. So, thank All you right. again, and you guys take, take care. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank John. you. You too.